name's Chris and I repair my own audio equipment and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. Normally I show you guys different do-it-yourself techniques that I use to fix my own vintage audio gear and I hope they help you fix yours. But today I'm going to show you something that you probably should not be working on without the proper experience. So first, I'm going to show you a short video, though, of my vacuum tube equipment, and I just love the stuff. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you a technique you can use with Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop. To help you with your vintage audio equipment. But first, let's get into that vacuum tube information that I want to pass along to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I love my vacuum tube equipment, but now I'm going to tell you guys why for practical reasons and for safety reasons that unless you're very experienced with this equipment, you shouldn't own it. Unless you have a professional that can keep your equipment running for you. As many of you know, I'm a hobbyist who works on my own audio equipment and I try to show others how to work on it themselves because in today's world you just don't have the technical expertise out there that you used to have and a lot of times you're on your own when it comes to repairing this equipment. But today talking about vacuum tube equipment I want to tell you all the reasons why you probably shouldn't own it. And I know that sounds kind of odd coming from me because I own several pieces of vacuum tube equipment. But there's several reasons why for someone who's just getting into this hobby or who's not experienced around electricity should avoid vacuum tube equipment. Here's what I said during the video of my Marantz 10B tuner, but with a vacuum tube unit such as this one, a tube tester is really a must. It's just a must have to be able to have any chance to get these tube based units operating properly because most of the time you're going to have bad tubes. You just are. Back in the day I would have been able to just load up the 21 tubes that are in this Marantz 10B tuner and taken them down to my local Radio Shack, tested them for free, and picked up new tubes, but those days are long gone so you're on your own. So again this is another example how you're on your own with vintage equipment. You almost need to have your own tube tester or tube testers and there's a big expense right there just trying to get something like that so there's a big reason why I think you should avoid vacuum tube equipment but there's other reasons too and I'm about to tell you about those vacuum tube based equipment also is just more expensive to maintain it's not that tubes are inherently unreliable they last quite a while but it doesn't matter if your piece of vacuum tube equipment's been restored or not the more you use them the more you're going to have to replace them with a restored piece of solid state equipment you've got a real good chance it's going to sound just like it sounds for decades you're never going to have to get in there and do anything with it it's just going to run it's going to sound the same but tubes are just tubes aren't like that and you don't even realize how much the sound has been degraded until you put a new set of tubes in so to really keep your tube equipment running at a hundred percent 
you've got to spend a little bit of money on it with those vacuum tubes. And now what's happening in Russia, who knows what's going to happen with vacuum tubes because many of our vacuum tubes come from there. Right now, the prices are crazy. You know, they're getting hoarded like toilet paper did with COVID. I'm sure that problem will work its way out over time, but right now vacuum tubes are hard to come by. So there's another reason why you should really give it a second thought before you get into vacuum tube equipment. Before I get into the dangers of working on vacuum tube audio equipment, I just want to say again, as I started out the video, I love my vacuum tube equipment. I wouldn't ever get rid of it. I love the way it sounds. I love the way vacuum tubes sound. And I want to tell you, that Macintosh MX-110, wow, does it sound good. It sounds good with a tube amplifier hooked to it, but it sounds wonderful with a big solid state amplifier hooked to it also. The Fisher 800C is very surprising. It's just wonderful sounding. And what can you say about the Dynaco amplifiers? They're, they're tremendous. I mean, they just sound wonderful. So I just talked all the reasons not to own them. Now I'm talking and the reasons to own them. It's a lot like having a classic car, I think. And it's the same way with a lot of this 50-year-old, 60-year-old vacuum tube audio equipment. You're going to have to tinker with it a little bit more to keep it running. So now, let me get into the dangers of working on vacuum tube audio equipment. The danger with vacuum tube units has to do with the voltages that these units use routinely. All of the amplifiers and receivers that I showed in this video that I own, they all have voltages of 400 volts or more in them. That's a lot. Most solid state equipment doesn't have anything near those voltages. The power supplies, even of big solid state amplifiers, they're under 100 volts. Now don't get me wrong, you can also be injured working on a piece of solid state equipment. In a piece of solid state equipment, you've probably got a better chance hurting the equipment if you short something out. But in a piece of tube equipment, you've probably got a better chance of hurting yourself than hurting the equipment. But I know the old technicians, it's kind of like uh, you use one hand right one hands in your pocket one hands in the unit so there's no way you can cl complete that circuit right to get shocked you've got to give that electricity a path to your body and if you've got two hands on that chassis you touch the wrong two things and uh, probably not going to feel good they're going to kill you I don't know tube equipment of all types certainly falls into a category of one of those things that can kill you or seriously injure you I don't want to try to scare you. If you've got the basic skills to do it, then you know the proper safety procedures and things like insulated shoes, keeping one hand behind you, not working alone. I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous, but the voltages in these tube amplifiers really can be dangerous. I've never been bit by one of these, but people who work on tube amplifiers, whether it's audio amplifiers or guitar amplifiers or any type of tube equipment, many of those have been shocked and it don't feel good. And most of the time it's just not being careful. There's no other way to put it other than if you're or do it yourself or it's better to just stay away from tube amplifiers and I say I keep saying amplifiers it's just better to stay away from vacuum tube equipment it really can be dangerous you know I mean I just tell you I don't tell people what to do or what not to do but I thought it was time for me to maybe just talk about there are some dangers with this equipment and especially tube equipment I just wanted to pass that along because I don't want anybody to get hurt and you don't want to get hurt that's for sure now I want to to tell you about an idea I had years ago when I was missing the bezel on a Macintosh MX-115 tuner preamp. I thought to myself, well, this bezel missing here on this MX-115, that was pretty darn obvious. It wasn't hard to say, boy, anything's better than not having it. So I tinkered around and I made one out of photograde printer paper and I used some double-sided tape on it and it's been on there now, I'd say 10 years, because I wasn't going to pay, you know, $50, $100 when you can find them for a bezel. I just wasn't going to do it. Messing around with Photoshop, it taught me a new skill, and I like learning new things, and it didn't come out bad, and I really haven't thought much about it, and it just occurred to me. I was doing this about vacuum tubes, but I put this in there too. 
it might be something that would help other people that they hadn't thought of just using Photoshop to get over the hump. The original stenciling or the original stickers or the original bezel or whatever it is you're missing is going to be the ideal solution. But using Photoshop is not a bad one. It's certainly better than not having anything at all. So I just wanted to show you that. And that's just something you're going to have to mess around with. I, I like learning new things, new skills. Keeps me busy, keeps my mind working. So you just got to decide whether that's worth it to you or not. And if you don't have Photoshop, that's okay. There's many different free graphic editors that are out there on the internet. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up down below. For you non-subscribers, I'd really appreciate a subscription. And for my present subscribers, as always, thank you so much. Y'all have a good day.